I don't just feel tired. I look tired too. Everybody. welcome back to my channel so this week's video is a weekend in my life I figured I would just take you guys along with me so the first thing I obviously do is I start my day with prayer and you guys can see my cat socks behind me due to popular demand he is always in my videos <laughs> Hi, so please ignore the mess of my very messy room that you are going to see. Um, I have not had time to clean it this week yet, so hopefully next week I will, or even tomorrow. I might, I might have time tomorrow. I also will have more time tomorrow to go deeper into my morning routine, but it's already 6.54 and I have to leave at 7.30, so I really need to like cut it to it. I usually wouldn't wake up so close to the time I have to leave, but because I didn't get much sleep yesterday, I needed to sleep in for as long as I possibly could. And well, yeah, so it only gives me about an hour to get ready, which is fine, you know? So now I'm going to go do my makeup, I'm gonna get dressed, and I'm going to go get some coffee. By the way, that wasn't in order. I'm definitely getting coffee first. Yeah? Yeah? Seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time. I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright I don't know about you guys, but I love the song When the sun is out, the seasonal depression is that day Been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same As they were a year ago But all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago You guys probably noticed that I changed my outfit. It was wishful thinking to think that it was warm enough for a spring dress. It is not. It is currently 16 degrees outside. So I changed into some nice jeans, my favorite white sweater, and some boots. And I have my scarf just in case I get too cold. Also, my earrings are from Talos Art. Absolutely love her stuff. Okay, time to defrost the car. Okay, my dudes, we are officially here. I'm nervous, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of people here. My social anxiety is kind of kicking in a little bit. It's gonna be okay, it's gonna be good. We're here for babies. Okay, okay. Good morning. I'm vlogging per usual. Hello.
Mountain States, and I was really looking forward to this because we'd be celebrating the end of the pandemic. Yay! Uh, which is a good thing. It really is now over, uh, pretty much. Uh, I mean, it's unfortunate that we're also here today mourning the sins against human dignity being committed in Ukraine. Uh, but it is good that we are together to mourn that and to celebrate life. However, you have made a mistake asking me to come talk to you about how did Illinois get this bad was not uh, not a good idea. Um, you know, I know many of you in the audience and you know me, I, I'm not the guy you call when you want a sugar-coated happy answer. I'm your lawyer. You know, I'm, I'm trained in how bad will things get and then how do we sue people to try to fix it. <laughs> Equality for the pre-born, what a concept. Protecting the most vulnerable in our country well, I'm here to briefly explain why we are so confident that Roe will soon be overturned and forecast what that could mean for Illinois. So starting back in 1973, the U.S. Supreme Court had issued its landmark holding in Roe v. Wade. The court created a constitutional right to abortion after claiming it could not determine when a human's life begins. That's really the crux of that case. However, in Roe and in subsequent holdings, the court recognized that the case for abortion rights would collapse if it was determined that a pre-born human is a human. She would have loved to be pregnant, just not that. Karina was getting married, the wedding date was set, the dress was bought, and deposits had been placed in the reception hall. Karina confided in her mother, who told her that she should abort and she could always have more kids later. When Karina heard her baby's due date was her at her appointment, she said, she was speechless and thought it might be a sign. Karina took her mother's advice and aborted. After the abortion, the nurse told her she was carrying twins. She was extremely sad after hearing that news and immediately regretted having the abortion. Wow. So that's another terrible situation. You know, actually, I thought that, I mean, I've heard these situations, scenarios before, but I forgot all the outcomes. And I thought that when they said that it was her wedding day, she was going to be like, oh, it's, you know, it's a sign that I should keep this baby. But it's just imagine the heartbreak that she's going to go through for the rest of her life, knowing that she lost not one, but two of her children. Hello everybody, my name is Hope Miller. I have been a part of the pro-life movement my entire life, with my grandparents being Joe and Ann Scheidler. I attended many events growing up. But when I was about 13 years old, I decided to look into what was really going on and what abortion was and why I had been fighting it and continued to fight it. I gained a lot of knowledge on this issue and I knew I could not just sit idly by while this was happening in our great nation with God's children. I just dropped my chapstick down the side of my car. So that was basically, well, what you guys saw was a summary of Speak Out Illinois. Um, and if you want to see Hope's full speech, um, I'm sending it to her and I will see when she's uploading it and I'll try to tag it below in the description. Um, but yeah, so that was Speak Out Illinois. I've been here since 8 o'clock and it is now uh, 1240. So you guys saw snippets of it, which probably only took about maybe three minutes for you guys to watch, but I've been here for quite a few hours. Um, they did give us breakfast, which was nice. Drinking my little Starbucks Our Lady logo. Did you guys know that the Starbucks logo is actually the logo of Lilith? Like that's actually Lilith on the Starbucks logo. Let that just sink in for a second. Like, you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of Starbucks, but I'm not boycotting them anymore because literally any store can match their employees' um, donations to Planned Parenthood, whatever. But now I might because of that. I didn't know that till today, and I showed one of my friends this mug. They're like, oh yeah, did you know that the Starbucks logo is actually the logo, like a picture of Lilith? 
the more you know. So now I'm home. I changed out of my uncomfortable jeans um, into this t-shirt from His Glory Co. I am an ambassador for them, so if you guys want 15% off your purchase, just type in Little Flower at checkout. Um, and then I'm also wearing these earrings from Talos Art. Um, they did the other earrings as well that I was wearing earlier. Um, and obviously Socks is here. Oh, and he's gone. So I'm going to take some photos right now. Um, I have a podcast in about 38 minutes. Um, so I'm going to quickly do this photo shoot for His Glory Co. I'm going to need my phone for this. So you guys won't actually see me do the photo shoot, but I'll show you guys the results. Okay, so now that that's done, I am... I have about, oh, that didn't really take long at all. I have about, an, I have like 10 minutes left. Um, so I am quickly going to just uh, do some Bible reading since I have my Bible with me. And um, I'm also going to do some quick prayers. Um, usually I would do these in the morning, but because I was so rushed this morning to get out of the house, I didn't have time. But it's important to still keep consistent with your prayers, even if it's later in the day and you don't get them done when you planned on getting them done. Um, so I'm going to get those done now. I don't film my prayers because I feel like that's kind of like inappropriate just because like they're between me and God. Um, but I'll tell you the prayers I do. So I do the rosary. I do the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And usually I will try and add some other prayer in there, whether it's the St. Dymphna prayer. I have her holy card right here and her prayers on the back. Um, or just something from, you know, the consecration I've done, re renewing my baptismal vows, making an act of faith, hope, or, cher uh, faith, hope, or love. Um, so just something like that. So I'm going to do that and then it will be podcast time. So So it is currently 8 a.m. Oh, I'm sorry, I shocked you. Good morning. <laughs> so today I am actually going, excuse my hair. This is how you know I'm not like one of those fake influencers. I actually wake up like this. So today I'm going to my first Byzantine liturgy. Is it called Holy Liturgy? They don't call it Mass, though, which is confusing to me, so they call it something else. It is valid to go to. It does fulfill your Holy Sunday obligation, um, and one of my friends told me about it, so there's one pretty close to me, and you guys have been asking if I've gone to a Byzantine or an Eastern Rite Liturgy, and I have not, um, so today's gonna be the day that I do that. So let's go get ready.
I don't usually wash my hair two days in a row. Um, so day, today is a no hair wash day. Um, and <laughs> and uh, it depends on how greasy my hair gets because I do have two events later today. Um, but for masks, because I usually wear a head covering, I, I don't need to shower. Uh, well, I don't need, I don't need to like wash my hair, you know? So we'll see how greasy my hair gets for later for these events. Um, but for right now, I think I'm just going to wear a head covering to mass and not really worry about it. So we have to say Molly. <laughs> Molly. You're going to be the reason I don't get anything done today, sweetie. So I might pair this... No, no, no. Give me that. Molly. So... I'm thinking about... Don't bite me. Here. There. Pairing this dress with this top. That way it has sleeves and it's more modest. That probably looks more like a little house on the prairie dress right now. Oh, hi, Peter. Um, but that's going to be the outfit. Because... Ow. Ow. I don't know what else. So this is the final makeup look. I'm going to put my hair in whatever this thing is. Um, and then we're gonna, we're gonna go. Cause this place is actually a little bit farther um, than my normal church I would go to, so. Okay, so I look a little bald. It's okay. So we are officially on our way now. I've got my rosary that changes color. This is one of my favorite rosaries that heavy metal rosaries made specifically for me. Um, I just absolutely love this rosary. And so this one's going with me today. And I can tell you guys right now that this was not what I expected. I mean, it's very pretty, but this is not what I expected. I'm not sure what to think yet. Um, it's gorgeous. We gotta go inside. expected it to be like um and that's not bad at all i'm not saying anything bad about that it's just now i know how people feel when they go to the traditional latin mass for the first time um so a lot of my friends actually go to this parish that i and i didn't know that or maybe i did know that and that slipped my mind i think i did know that they went i don't think i knew that they went to this parish i knew that they were Byzantine, but i didn't think they went to this parish Anyways, so there was a baptism today, so we got to, like, witness a Byzantine baptism. It was so cool. Um, the baby was completely naked. And they did the exorcism prayers, and they did this whole ceremony. It was really cool to witness. The liturgy itself was really, really cool. I had a little trouble following along, so I had my friend Mary, shout out to Mary, um, for helping me uh, with figuring out where the heck I was in my book. <laughs> um, so that was really good. And it was just a lot of singing. Um, all the responsatories were really singing. Um, it was really involved, like you got involved with, with the liturgy a lot. Um, lots of standing. I think we only sat like twice in the entire hour and a half. <laughs> so my knee's a little sore. And then how they minister Holy Communion was really different too. Um, they minister it like the host and so like the body and blood of Christ are mixed together. And then they, they give it to you on a spoon. 
Um, and then there's two, like, ushers holding, like, a cloth underneath you so that if anything dribbles or drops or something, it's caught on the cloth. It was really good. And the deacon gave an amazing homily about Lent and what's happening in Ukraine right now. And honestly, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, if the TLM get shut down after two years here, I'm going to, I'm going to start going to Byzantine because of the reverence and everything. It's beautiful. Um, I didn't feel like I was overdressed because a lot of the times when I go to Novus Ordo parishes, I feel overdressed when I go because a lot of the times everybody's in jeans and a t-shirt, sometimes shorts and a tank top. Um, not the one I go to, of course, the, the Novus Ordo that I go to is very, very reverent. But when I go to other ones or I go with friends to their churches and things, it's it's hard for me to dress like this and not feel out of place. Um, anyways, so yeah, amazing experience. Thank you to all my friends. Matt, Mary's brother. I'm so sorry. I forgot your name. <laughs> I think it's Matt. Two Matts. I'm so sorry. Um, Mary, her sister Natalie, and I think that's it. Um, but lots of amazing people. It was a really, really cool liturgy. Um, I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, but TLM is where my heart is, of course. I really loved it. So if TLM gets off put, I'm still going to fight for the TLM, of course, 100%. But um, I'm going to start going to Byzantine liturgies because um, I think they do it very reverently and I really liked it. So. There you go. There's my little two cents on my first time going to a Byzantine uh, holy liturgy, I think. is what, They don't call it mass. They call it a holy liturgy, I think. I don't know. Somebody correct me. Anyways, we're going to go home, get some food. It is currently 1230. We've been there since 920. So um, we're going to go get some food now. So I'm home. Um, I am going to have some soup for lunch. And then I'm going to actually work on some homework. I'm not going to film that because I feel like that's extremely boring. Um, but I'm just letting you guys know I'm going to work on some homework. So, yeah. So, it is officially 3.06 in the afternoon. Um, I'm going to a get together later tonight with a group of friends that you see quite often on my channel. Um, you recognize Mache from yesterday and Veronica. They're actually getting married soon, which is really exciting. Um, you'll see Matt, who you guys saw earlier, and then, uh, yeah, just a bunch of other friends. So, before that though, um, I'm pretty stressed because of school because my software is not working for my Adobe so I decided to email my teacher and ask for an extension on the projects he's having us do which are due tomorrow. I only had a couple things left to do on mine but then it crashed and I think I lost everything. So to relieve some stress I'm going to go to the gym for a little bit. I don't have that long because the event starts at 5 and my gym is like 20 minutes away but you know we'll figure it out. And so many people ask me what I wear to the gym this is it. T-shirt, sweatpants. That's it. Um, sometimes I will wear leggings, especially if it's leg day, because I need to wear my leg brace, my knee brace, um, when working out. But that's the only time I really wear leggings. I don't really wear shorts to the gym, because I just find them very uncomfortable, and I'm constantly pulling them down or pulling them up, and I don't know. I can't work out comfortably in shorts, and the whole reason I go to the gym is to work out, not to look good. So... This is what we're going in. Okay, firstly, I apologize for the amount of shots you guys get from inside my car. So I'm heading to the gym right now. I'm probably going to get some Panera afterwards. Then I'm going to meet some friends for some drinks and some Bible study and just some community and stuff. Is that a child on a hoverboard? Okay, so this grandma's walking a dog and the child's on a hoverboard. She needs to use her legs. This is our problem with society today. Hoverboards. We're here, folks. Time to go work out.
maybe I'll get food there actually. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, I'm gonna get food there. Okay, let's go to this event. Also, I need to charge my phone because it's getting low on battery. So it's officially 9.15. Um, Matt just walked me to my car, so thank you, Matt. I appreciate it because there are creepy people everywhere all the time. Making sure my doors are locked. Um, so now we're gonna head home and that's basically the end of this video. So I appreciate those of you who stuck around for this long. Um, this is basically just a weekend in my life. Uh, not all weekends are this busy, but I figured you could see what I did on one of my busier weekends. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye!